everyone, it's Gavin Strange here creating Mischief and Masterpieces on Editor X. This class is all about the advanced video capabilities on this platform. I'll show you how I use Hover Animations, Video Box and Lightbox to set up the showreel you see here. Let's get into it. All right, so I've already got my menu set up at the top and on the left, as well as this text here in a vibrant green that's already been stacked. A quick refresher, stacked elements will keep a set distance from each other no matter how you resize the screen. It's hard to see, but this stack is actually made up of a grid sandwiched between two text boxes. Since you can only stack elements in a vertical direction, the grid is in place to make sure the horizontal line gets stacked too. I've also already set a minimum and maximum font size for this text to scale between depending on the viewport size. See? OK, so let's add our video. Now, you could head over to the Add panel to add a video box directly from the Media tab, but because we're going to be adding a cool hover effect to it, we'll first add a simple container and then place the video box inside of that. So we've got the container selected, and now I'll use the Inspector panel on the right to adjust the size and positioning. We set the sizing to fixed so it stays the same size at any screen width, change the width to 300 pixels and the height to 400 pixels for a nice rectangular shape. And from the design tab over here, we'll remove the borders. I know you can't see them now, but trust me, they're there. Back to the add panel where you can add all sorts of elements to your site. This time we'll use it to access our media files. I'll add this fun little video I created. Who doesn't love a pinata? just shrink it by hand so I can make sure it fits inside of our container. Then I'll stretch it so it takes up the entire container. I love how the quality of my video stays super high, even after I've added it to my site. Before I do anything else there, I'm just going to get rid of this play button by selecting it and using these three dots to hide it. Brilliant. What really sets Editor X apart is the ability to edit the design of your video player directly on the canvas. Under the Design tab of the Inspector panel, not only can I add a pattern overlay like this, but I can also customize the shape of the video itself by playing with the contour. Since I only want to edit the top two corners, I'll unlink them first and then set the top two to 600 pixels each. Yeah, look at the sweet arch we've got going on there. Nice. Now, I'll select the container again from the blue breadcrumbs, undock it from all sides, and reset the margins. I want this green line from our stack to appear on top of the video. So from the Layers panel, I'll drag the container under the stack. That's the great thing about the Layers panel. You can use it to view all the elements on your page and manage how they're ordered. I know we just got rid of our play button, but that's only because we're going to add our own customized design to fit the rest of the site. Back to the Add panel, let's use a decorative tab this time to choose a play button and drag it in. Let's align it to center and middle. And let's change the width to, let's go with 40 pixels. Rotate it. And under Design, we'll change the color to, surprise, surprise, this epic green again. Let's take a quick pause to check how our stack and video behave on desktop. Yeah, that looks great. Let's carry on. So when we click this play button, a massive video is going to pop up and take over the screen. We're going to set that up now. Under Layout Tools, you'll see we have a selection of pre-designed light boxes. These are handy if you've got an online store, for example. But I'm going to need something a little different, so I'll choose this one and quickly delete the contents of it to customize the design. I'll start by changing the width and height to 92% so that it takes up almost the entire screen and set the minimum height to none. To customize the light box settings, I'll set the triggers from the floating action bar. I'll use it to rename this thing to real love and then make sure the automatic display is set to no so that it doesn't start playing as soon as the page loads. No need for a grid here, so let's just delete it. All right, let's add a video to our light box. I'll head over to my media files, choose this video I created to give a bold introduction to my site, and stretch it to fill the light box. Now, 
If you select the background while the light box is open, you can customize how it will look when the video is playing. Let's give it a green hue as well. Now, the last thing we need to do is to link our play button to our light box. Let's jump back to our video box and select the play button. You can use this link icon to link an element to a web address, another page, an email, whatever you want really. We'll link ours to the light box we just designed and hit done. Are you ready to see how this turned out? That is awesome. All right, so we've got it nicely set up on desktop, but when I use the resizing handles, you can see it turns into a jumbled mess on tablet and mobile. Responsive web design can be meticulous, but I promise you the results are always worth it in the end. Right, let's start with tablet. I'll select the stack and change the width to 55% and the bottom margin to 30%. That's looking better already. I think the text should be bigger on tablet, so I'll reset the text scale for this breakpoint. Actually, I think we can do without this line too, right? Yeah. Well, now that we're set on tablet, let's take a look at the mobile breakpoint. This vertical section is taking up way too much space, so I'll use the three dots to select Don't Display. So I'm not deleting it from my site completely, I'm just hiding it on this breakpoint. All right, our video box needs a bit of work. Let me grab this container and set the width to 85%, and the height to 70%. I'll set the minimum height to none and the maximum width to 400 pixels so that when I resize the screen, the container width will never go above 400 pixels. Oh, almost forgot. Let's set the left margin to 0, 2. All right, let's tackle this text. We'll select our stack and set the width to 100%. Let's adjust the margins a bit. Fantastic. Starting with the first line, we'll play around with the text scale and center the text. So now we've kind of got this descending order happening, but not for long. This next line of text is going to require a little bit more work. On previous breakpoints, this line of text was part of a grid because it had that green line placed next to it. But since we got rid of that line, we can get rid of the grid too. Don't worry, it'll only be deleted from this breakpoint. I'll set the left margin of the container to zero, and now I'll select the actual text to set the width and center it. I'll reset the text scale for this one too. We're getting somewhere. The bottom line of text just needs a quick fix. We'll center it and set the text to scale from 28 to 32. Great. All right, everyone, I think it's time we amp up this design with some hover interactions. This is where the entire web experience becomes interactive. It's all about the sort of fun dialogue between you and the site. In this case, we're gonna use hover interactions to turn this play button into found treasure for those who wander over it with their mouse. Now, the best way to use interactions is to apply them to the parent container of the elements we want them to affect. So to add a hover interaction to this play button, we'll first choose a container from the breadcrumbs and then head over to the Interactions tab on the Inspector panel. We're going custom for this one. I'll select the Play button now, but before we set anything else, it's important to note that you can control the Hover Interaction setting on the Initial and the Hover state. Let's start with changing how the Play button will appear on the Initial state, meaning before you mouse over it. Under Adjust, we'll change the Opacity to 0%, and then use this timing panel to set the interaction duration to 0.2 seconds so the play button loads pretty quickly on hover. Now onto the other breakpoints. So on tablet and mobile, hover interactions are automatically converted to appear on tap, but I don't want that. I think the play button should be shown off the bat, so all I have to do is change the opacity back to 100%. And since these style changes cascade down to smaller breakpoints, you'll see the same changes automatically apply to mobile. How good is that? All right, let's see what we got. And when I hit play, <laughs> yeah, man, that's so good. 
mais. So I know we've only scratched the surface on hover interactions here, but luckily for you, I've actually got another entire tutorial about the magic of interactions on Editor X. Thanks for watching everyone, and don't miss out on my other classes in this series. Cheers! Mm -hmm.